So for me, I I grew up in uh, Appalachia, America. I grew up in the coal fields of Kentucky. I went to college for uh, engineering, those types of things. And then I went to college with the intent is I wanted to build uh, cars. And then one day I just decided I was going to go into biomedical engineering because I actually wanted to like develop things that were going to impact people's lives through, you know, surgery, those types of things. So that's really when I made like a decision, like I want to do something that is going to directly impact people's lives. All that time while I was doing that as a career, I was also doing jujitsu. Okay, and then around 2002, I started teaching jujitsu. Um, and when I started teaching jujitsu, obviously, like my career was focused on, you know, we're developing these products that felt help people uh, medically. Uh, but then, obviously, not long after teaching jujitsu, you know, I started teaching jujitsu because it was uh, uh, just due to circumstances. But after I started teaching jujitsu, then I started to really see, like, oh, like this jujitsu is just not learning jujitsu. Like, you know, it's impacted my life. Now I get to see it impact the lives of people that I'm teaching. I've had jiu-jitsu students now for basically 19 years, and some of them are still active, right? Um, so, but yeah, so there's been people that have been in my life and been a part of my life for a long time that sometimes it's good to reflect back. And it's like, oh, like, yeah, because I, I moved to Minnesota in 2000, right? And then 2002, I started teaching jiu-jitsu, right? So some of these people I've known almost as long as I've been here. Right? And as you get older, you start to realize like, oh, like this, part, this person's been like a part of my life. I've been a part of their life. Well, I remember the first time I took jujitsu very specifically. I was doing karate at the time. I had done a little bit of judo prior. After judo, I did boxing. Then I started doing karate. Uh, I did karate for several years. And then I did jujitsu. First time I did jujitsu was in 1999. So in... 1999, I went and trained with the first person um, that I did jujitsu with. And you have to understand, in 1999, like there were not many jujitsu gyms anywhere in the United States. So finally, there's I, I find a school about 60 miles away from me. So when I started jujitsu, I drove 60 miles each way every day to do jujitsu six days a week. Uh, it took about an hour each way. Right, um, about an hour each way, and I did it six days a week. Right? So I'd make that drive every day, and then do whatever I was going to do, and then because sometimes I would go in the morning, sometimes I would go at night. Um, I wasn't working or doing anything at the time because I was in, I kind of had this year where I was kind of figuring out what I was going to do with my life. So I focused on jujitsu for about ten months when I was in Kentucky before I ended up in Minnesota. But when I went, I found a school. The person that taught there, there's two people that taught there, one a blue belt, one a purple belt. I think at the time there was only one purple belt in the state of Kentucky. He was the first person I ever actually trained with. Uh, it was an eye-opening event for me yeah. because everything he did to me, I would have never imagined somebody could do as easily as he did it. And then immediately I fell in love with it and that became martial arts wise my singular focus. I was like, I'm gonna get as good at this as I can. I fell in love with jujitsu literally from day one. So to have something three months, you're doing it every day, you've made this big commitment in time to drive this far away every day and to drive home. And then and then when I got hurt, it was like a lot of times when you get hurt, you're like, well, it's probably not that bad. And then I came back like a day or two later and I tried to do it again. I physically could not do anything. And then finally I went and saw a doctor and the doctor was like, well, you tore a ligament in your arm, so you're not gonna be any, doing anything for any time soon. So it was an important lesson to me just to like help me understand like, Hey, I need to train smart. I need to kind of let my ego go when I'm training so I can stay on the mat and continue to do this thing I love, right? Because I've got three months in and now I've got three months lost, right? And I never want that to happen again. And the most time I've ever taken off since then um, um, was two weeks. Uh, oh, I had a baby and my wife asked me to take two weeks off after we had Valentina. I spent like a lot of time like doing like my formative years of jujitsu. I spent a lot of time around Pedro and he was in Utah at the time. So the summers I would go out and train at Utah uh, for some of the summer. 
Um, so in my formative years in jiu-jitsu from like blue and purple belt, uh, I spent a lot of time around Pedro. So not only him coming to Minnesota, but I would try to go to Utah. Whenever he was in an area that was, you know, six to seven hours away, I would always go and train with him. Um, so no, it was very, it was very important. But it comes back also to like working hard, right? Like traveling is not physically hard. Committing yourself to I'm gonna go six hours away, spend the weekend doing this thing, right? That's mentally working hard. Like I'm dedicated to this. I'm not gonna find an excuse to cancel my trip to Chicago. No, I'm gonna get on a plane or I'm gonna drive to Chicago and then I'm gonna go to Milwaukee and then I'm gonna go to Madison and then we're gonna end up back in Minnesota. I, that's part of working hard, willing to like sacrifice my weekend, sacrifice time on a plane or in a car to get access to this knowledge. I went to California. I was still working in the medical industry. I was offered an, I was offered an opportunity to go to California. So when I, left, when I left Minnesota to go to California, I had no definite intention to come back and open a gym. Uh, when I left, I had told people there's a possibility when I come back, I'll open a gym. I didn't know what was going to happen when I finally did come back to Minnesota. I didn't know am I going to have like the ability or, but probably I was in California for probably three to four months. And then I made a definitive decision when I go back to Minnesota, I'm opening a gym. I don't know exactly what it was going to look. I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like at that point. Was it going to be a gym that you know, I'm here and I've got all these other responsibilities, so it's going to be open Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Is it going to be a full-time gym, which is eventually what we decided to do. Um, but I didn't, but I knew, but I made a definite decision, like I'm going to open a gym. Hey, just one second. I'm finishing it up right now. Ryan Dixon, mine's the general manager. Uh, I'm the general manager of M3 Martial Arts. Uh, I've been the general manager for... Ryan's been here almost four years now. Or Ryan, I think Ryan has been here for four years. I think Ryan started here January 2017, I believe. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for six and a half. Um, I've been at M-Theory, training at M-Theory for four years. And um, uh, I made a couple of Yeah, so he, he trained here for a while and then uh, the person before him eventually left to pursue a different career and then uh, yeah, Ryan took that position. I did actually expected to probably be fired within a couple months, but uh, that hasn't happened, which is good. So, um, yeah, no, it's been a good transition. Ish and me get along pretty well. So, I basically just make sure everything's taken care of at the gym, and I've gotten much better at reading the things that Ish does and doesn't like, and sort of navigating like how to solve problems before they become problems. I enjoy being like having most of the answers for the gym. Um, some of it can get kind of tiresome and repetitive, but uh, it's, it's good like helping people enjoy the gym and, and like making sure they get the right experience. Um, that's actually really satisfying. He helps the kids class, yeah. Yeah, so he helps in the kids class. So we have pretty big kids program, so. I have been teaching classes, um, kids classes, um, as an assistant for two years, I think, and then uh, I just started taking over the Saturday classes. Oh yeah, that, that is actually the best part of the job. That is awesome. Like, the kids are super cool. Kid, kids are, it can be pretty uh, stressful if you have 30 of them on a mat and they're all going insane. It's the, it's the first time in my life also where sort of like the lines of personal life and professional life have really crossed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we, we spend a lot of time together. I've changed quite a bit. Like I, my my uh, my sort of like what well, tank for socializing with people is much bigger now. Forced extrovert is the exact well, exactly what I am. So now now I've I've like along with my jujitsu getting better, I've also like gotten much better at being being able to socially interact with people. Um, and it still is like even usually by the end of the day, I'm like done. Right, I've used all of it up usually, but I can go the whole day talking with people all day. Blah, 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 and it's still, it's like, I, I can handle it and not get, like, burnt out or anything. So that's been a huge benefit. And the other thing that I've found really good at is remembering people's names now. Yeah. The Jiu-Jitsu attracts so many different types of people that you just, it's, it regularly probably would never meet them or have any interaction. But because we do this, you get to see different uh, viewpoints on everything, and 
to get to like associate with people that you probably would never know otherwise, which is super cool. I had a five-year plan. I would be, when I came back from California, I started consulting in the medical industry, which actually worked out really well for me. But while I was doing that, it allowed me to run the gym basically full time, which, you know, we had classes in the morning, but most of the classes were at night. Uh, but again, I could make my schedule so I could work everything around that. But that was a long five years. But I knew that was going to be a long five years. And if, we, if I did it the right way, it would get me to a point where hopefully in 2018, I could transition from being full-time medical consultant, full-time gym owner, to just full-time gym owner. And it, it worked out. It, it, it worked out almost exactly how I planned it, fortunately. Everything kind of fell into place at the right time. And that goes back to hard work. The willingness to teach, for me to teach, you know, between privates and classes I have 25 times a week, right, is the ability to come here and do that Monday through Saturday, sometimes Sunday, um, and work that way. But knowing that I want to have a gym that everybody feels welcome, and you can't do that if you only have three or four classes a week. You have to have an offering for everybody. Right? And that just is the willingness to put time into the gym and be here all the time.